We're still parsing the election returns, but uh, Obama probably ran about three points behind Democrats uh, running for Congress. Um, you could do a map. There were parts of the country that were actually more Republican this year than they were in 2004. And it's a map that corresponds pretty closely to uh, the areas of, of uh, peak slave holding 125 years ago. So it, we're still, we are still, 140 years ago, uh, we are still suffering from this, but it's not, not the same country. So American politics was headed substantially towards the left. Uh, the possibility for a, a radical, for a break with this conservative trend was there. Uh, what I never imagined was how parallel, how close the parallels with the 1930s would end up become. So what we have now, on top of these underlying trends that were making it possible to have a, a new liberal, a new social democratic uh, politics in the United States, um, we now have an economic <coughs> crisis that is uh, terrifyingly reminiscent of the 1930s. That economic crisis is uh, rooted, uh, I'm sure people will want to hear more, but essentially we've had a financial collapse that is very similar at a deep level to the bank collapses of the 1930s. The, the banks uh, aren't called banks, they don't look like banks, they're not big marble buildings with, uh, with deposit windows, but a, a money market fund or a hedge fund or a uh, auction rate securities, uh, all the various institutions that have gotten into terrible trouble, uh, functionally were serving a banking role, but they were unregulated, they were without guarantees. Um, and all of the uh, eager attempts to make lots of money quick uh, led to a system that was extremely fragile, just as it did in the 1920s. And banking collapse. Uh, financial collapse. Um, when the housing bubble burst, it brought down about half of our financial system with it in practice. So we have a, a slump that is uh, uh, very similar uh, at, a, at a deep level. Obviously, things look different on the but at a deep level, it looks very much like the 1930s. Um, what is all that, uh, and, and it comes Barack Obama um, into this troubled economy? Um, in the 1930s, um, Franklin Roosevelt was able to come to a country that had been devastated, where the, the, the conservative ideology of his time had been discredited by the crisis, offering the possibility of all this change. Um, the, uh, when, what he said, one of my favorite uh, quotations um, from Roosevelt was, he said, uh, we have always known that heedless self-interest was bad morals. We now know that it is bad economics, too. Uh, and we're exactly in that situation again. So we have a, an almost eerie recreation of the conditions of the New Deal. Now, the slump is not as severe as it was in, uh, uh, in 1933. Um, we hope it won't become as severe. Uh, that's partly uh, Obama's responsibility to make sure that it doesn't. Uh, but the, the shake-up, the sense that we need to change is there, and that in itself, that's a, a great danger, but it's also, of course, a great opportunity, a chance to really make things different. So what happens now? Um, the immediate question is, is going to be dealing with the crisis. And what I can, am deeply concerned about is simply the time to get things moving. Um, we, the, I like the speeches that Obama's giving now. He's talk, and I like what I'm hearing about their plans. Uh, uh, we, we need, desperately need, support for demand in, in the United States. But we have the private sector is pulling back. Businesses either don't want to invest or can't invest because they can't get credit. Consumers don't want to spend or can't spend because they can't get credit. People are saving, uh, which is a good thing eventually, but not when everyone tries to do it at once. Um, we desperately need government support for the economy to fill the hole that's being left by this abrupt retreat of the private sector. Um, and I'm waiting to see numbers and specifics, but it looks like we will have at least a fairly large, we will have a very large program, whether it be big enough is the question. We're going to, in some ways, repeat uh, what Roosevelt did in the 1930s, when, as, as many countries did, but what Roosevelt did with uh, large-scale public works, uh, 
uh, as a source of employment and also as a source of income. Uh, what I worry is whether we can get the stuff going fast enough to avoid a, a very, very great deal of damage. In fact, I'm almost certain that we can't. We are um, losing jobs at the rate of at least half a million a month. Um, the uh, projects to create new employment will probably take six months to a year to begin on a large scale. So this is going to be a very, very bad year ahead of us. Um, we hope that the new administration can at least convey the sense that help is on the way and want to get us through this. Beyond that, what do you do? Um, the great thing, by the way, um, in the 1930s, Franklin Roosevelt was one of our greatest presidents. He saved, uh, I think you could say he saved democracy. He saved the world both, both uh, during the Depression and during the war that followed. Um, but he didn't do everything right. He, uh, he was too cautious in his support for the economy. And he pulled it back too soon so that he presided over a, a second major slump in 1938. Uh, we hope that the, well, we, we both hope that, and uh, I hope that the, the next administration of the United States won't make those mistakes and I and others are yelling at them to make sure that they don't make the same mistakes. So that's part of the, the, the process here. Um, but what Roosevelt did most importantly was to create the institutions that, uh, that sustained a decent society for decades afterwards. Um, of those, the most important was Social Security on the, in terms of government programs, the, uh, our, our retirement system, which is the rock of whatever stability we have. Um, and then on top of that, uh, the support for a strong labor movement, which did so much to make us a more equal society. Um, for Obama, the equivalent of Social Security is health care. Um, his administration will be a success or a failure based on two things, whether it succeeds in stabilizing the economy uh, and whether he succeeds in enacting some form of a universal guarantee of health care for the United States. Um, and that's going to be a huge task. Uh, um, there's a great argument among uh, progressives in the United States about sequencing. Should he try to rescue the economy first and then do health care? Or should he try to do it I'm sorry, all at once? And I believe he should try to do it all at once. That this is the moment people have seen that the policies of the past don't work. This is the moment to uh, push it through and get it all done. And we'll see whether that happens. Whether the program will start up immediately is going to the next um, uh, we, we traditionally, we talk about the 100 days. Uh, I'll, I'll give them 180. Uh, the next 180 days are going to be something to really watch. Um, will it happen? Uh, there have been, the, the, I think that, that um, no one expected the situation to be quite as bleak in real terms as it is now. Uh, the, uh, some of us, I, I thought there would be a problem with the economy, I thought the housing bubble would burst, I didn't expect it to be so grave. Uh, I didn't expect the financial system to simply shrivel up as it has. So it's a very, very difficult time. Um, that gives, as I say, it gives political opportunity, but it also creates a great risk because there is a real possibility that the economic recovery program will fail. Uh, but if, if it does succeed, and if the political momentum also helps us to get universal health care, it really will be a transformation. So this might be, we wait to see, we wait to see what what, uh, um, what qualities the new team really has in office. Uh, but the chances are, I, I'd say there's at least even odds that you'll wake up four years from now and say that was not the America we were dealing with. This is a completely different and much, much better country than we really have had a new deal and that the future is much better than anyone imagined, let's say, in 2005. Mm -hmm.